NANI? So today's video is one of the most exciting GPU comparisons that I've done in the past few months and usually for, not usually, it is actually for three reasons. The first one is that it is the first GPU comparison including the RTX... <laughs> So it's the first GPU comparison actually including the RTX 3070 benchmarks in GPU comparisons. Uh, we have the, the previous video with 25 games, but those are gameplays and not benchmarks with charts and so on. The second reason is that w I'm finally now including new games. Yes, new games that you asked for, like for example Microsoft Flight Simulator, now we have a Plague Tale Requiem, uh, we have way more games than before, well, we have the same games but we have newer games, which is, once again, if you like benchmarks like I do, it's exciting to see the results. And the third one is that we not only have rasterization benchmarks right now, but we also have Ray tracing benchmarks, something that you've, you've asked before and ray tracing is getting more and more relevant so it is only right that I actually test games with uh, ray tracing as well and I even added upscaling results so with FSR, DLSS and even XESS from Intel, okay? One game, Spider-Man for example, has the three of them so I tested Spider-Man and we also have God of War with FSR and DLSS to see how all different generations of GPUs actually handle FSR, DLSS and so on. So far we have the 6700 XT versus the 3070 versus the 6800 and this because these cards are in different tiers, in slightly different tiers, uh, even more for the 6700 XT, but price Prices have been dropping considerably for the AMD GPUs uh, and we can actually find now a 6800 more or less on the same price as the RTX 3070. So which card should you actually get? You should go cheaper and go with the 6700 XT? Should you go to the 3070 because ray tracing and the LSS? Or should you go to the 6800 because it is supposed to be faster and well we have FSR as well. And that's what I want to show you in this video. Without any further delays, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video and let's go to the benchmarks. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, featuring Black Friday deals with 10% discount on peripherals such as mice, mechanical keyboards and gamepads. And as usual with 25% off across several products when using my SKG discount code making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Today's first game is Plague Tale Requiem, a new addition to our GPU tests. This is a very heavy game that's also very heavily sponsored by Nvidia, but that doesn't mean that the game will automatically perform worse on AMD cards, but it usually does. Still, at 1080p high settings, the RX 6800 still manages to be faster than the 3070 at stock versus stock, virtually tying with both tuned, losing slightly in terms of 1% lows, with of course, the RX 6700 XT delivering considerably lower results than both cards. At 1440p, the RX 6700 XT struggles to achieve 56 average FPS, while the other two cards are tied at around 70. And at 4K, well, the RX 6800 finally takes the lead over the RTX 3070. But we're talking about 36 versus 38 FPS, which makes absolutely no difference in a real-world gameplay. Great results for the RTX 3070 here. Thank you. 
Now we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, an AMD sponsored title. As can be seen, Smart Access Memory is a must. While both AMD cards were losing to the RTX 3070 at stock, once we enable Smart Access Memory, even the RX 6700 XT manages to be on par with the RTX 3070. This while consuming way less power. At 1440p, the RX 6800 continues to smoke the RTX 3070, and even the RX 6700 XT with its smaller buzz width manages to keep on par with the RTX 3070, which is amazing. At 4K, the RX 6700 XT finally gets beaten by the RTX 3070 by 7 average FPS, while still being slower than the RX 6800 by 8, which makes the RX 6800 the only card able to run this game at 4K with over 60 average FPS. Cyberpunk 2077 it is, and now we're bringing the inbuilt benchmark for you guys to compare your results to mine. If you want to, of course. At 1080p, smart access memory plays a major role once again, pushing the RX 6800 from slightly faster than the RTX 3070 to RTX 3070 is my breakfast, pushing 21 average FPS more. At 1440p, the RX 6800 still delivers considerably higher results than both cards, with the RX 6700 XT delivering a pretty respectable result for a GPU of its tier. And even at 4K, the RTX 3070 is only slightly faster than it, with the RX 6800 being the only GPU getting closer to the 45 FPS mark. Another new addition to our benchmarks is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, because if this game wasn't here, people would moan of pain. Figures. At 1080p, we immediately see the RX 6700 XT getting really close to the RTX 3070, being only around 4 FPS behind, which once again is an incredible result for this card. At 1440p, the RX 6800 maintains the lead it had at 1080p, delivering over 100 average FPS, so around 20 average FPS over the RTX 3070, with the RX 6700 XT being really close to it once again. And at 4K, well, the scaling gets maintained, with the RX 6800 being the only card able to push over 60 average FPS. Guardians of the Galaxy is also a new addition using the X12 and Ultra settings. This is the first game where I see the RTX 3070 being so much better than the AMD cards. I even checked twice to see if the LSS was activated, but no, the RTX 3070 just blows both AMD GPUs out of the water with higher averages than the RX 6800, but with massively higher 1% lows meaning that the gameplay will be much smoother with the RTX 3070 in this game. At 1440p, the RTX 3070 surpasses the RX 6800 by 7 average FPS and once again, much higher 1% lows, and even at 4K, the 1% lows difference can still be noticed, going from 54 on the RX 6800 to up to 64 with the RTX 3070. Forza Horizon 5 is one of those games I like to test on AMD GPUs, and that's due to the massive FPS increase that we have when using Smart Access Memory. 
As you can see, both AMD GPUs were pretty much on par with each other and behind the RTX 3070. But as soon as we activate SAM, we get an outrageous FPS boost of 42 average FPS on the RX 6700 XT and 49 on the RX 6800. Not even mentioning the 1% lows that are now higher than the averages without SAM. At 1440p, both AMD GPUs can deliver higher performance than the RTX 3070, with even the more efficient RX 6700 XT delivering 9 average FPS over the RTX 3070 once again, which is just insane. Actually, it is so insane that even at 4K it outperforms the RTX 3070 while consuming almost 80 watts less. With Rainbow Six Extraction, we get once again the RX 6700 XT fighting to outperform the RTX 3070, and it actually manages to do it at 1080p, with virtually the same average FPS but with almost 20 FPS more in the 1% lows. Although, as soon as we go to 1440p, that lead gets taken away by the RTX 3070, that is still considerably slower than the RX 6800, but now faster than the RX 6700 XT. And it even gets more impressive as soon as we go to 4K, where it actually gets on par with the RX 6800 in terms of averages, losing only in terms of 1% lows, and of course, being much faster than the RX 6700 XT. Very good results for the RTX 3070 at 1440p and 4K. Approach Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra is type Cessna 152 4 and since you guys asked so much for it, we now have Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 as well, flying over the Hungarian Parliament, using the X12 and high-end settings. The first thing that I noticed with this game was that the AMD cards gameplay felt a bit smoother, and that is translated in the 1% lows. The closer the 1% lows are to the averages, the smoother the gameplay will feel, and that's something that the AMD cards do exceptionally well in this title. At 1440p, the scales get maintained with the RX 6800 being the faster card overall and getting an FPS boost from Sam, while the RX 6700 XT gets nodding out of it, which is... interesting, I guess. At 4K, well, things are once again the same, with not even the RX 6800 managing at least 60 FPS. God of War is another title that I really wanted to bring you since it is one of the most played the X11 titles nowadays in terms of single player games, and a well optimized one as well. At 1080p ultra settings, the RX 6800 manages to deliver over 110 average FPS, around 10 FPS over the RTX 3070, with the RX 6700 XT being once again a nice surprise with 92 average FPS. As we go to 1440p, the RTX 3070 gains some ground, getting closer to the RX 6800 and now being considerably faster than the RX 6700 XT, in this case once again by 10 average FPS, which is around 20% here. Going to 1440p ultra wide makes the RTX 3070 even closer to the RX 6800 because, well, Ampere does work better with higher resolutions than RDNA 2 usually, so this might be it. Overall, great results for all GPUs. Red Dead Redemption 2 is another one of those games where smart access memory makes a huge difference, in terms of averages, but most importantly in terms of 1% lows, where we get a massive increase of up to 40 FPS. Once again, with Sam, the RX 6700 XT gets really close to the RTX 3070 in this game, which is really cool to see. The gap gets a little bigger once we go to 1440p, but even there, the RX 6700 XT handles its own pretty well against the RTX 3070, actually delivering way better 1% lows. And at 4K, well, 
the RX 6800 just continues to show its dominance, being once again the only card able to deliver over 60 average FPS at this resolution. All but lost hope. We're not from here either. Silantius locked us up here a year ago. And well, since people were calling me fanboy because I never tested ray tracing, here are some results with our first game being Metro Exodus The Enhanced Edition. This is a full ray tracing game, so you can't even launch it if your GPU does not support ray tracing, and that's why you don't see any non-RT results. In here we can see that the RTX 3070 massively outperforms both AMD cards, delivering 118 average FPS at 1080p, which puts it 30 FPS over the RX 6800. Although it is still interesting to note that the AMD cards do have a smoother gameplay overall, even though they're much slower. Take a look at the RX 6800 for example, where we have higher 1% lows than the RTX 3070 at 1080p and around the same at 1440p even with way lower averages. Still, this is a massive win to the RTX 3070, just showing once again how much behind the RX 6000 series is in terms of ray tracing. Going to Cyberpunk 2077 with high settings, all RT options enabled and lighting to medium, we have the native results in black bars and we have the ray tracing results alongside the upscalers as well. Natively the RX 6800 is much faster than the RTX 3070 at 1080p, but once we enable ray tracing it actually gets bitten by it. Badly. That does not change at 1440p where the RTX 3070 with ray tracing and the LSS quality reaches basically 60 average FPS, while even the RX 6800 barely reaches 44. Moving to a lighter ray tracing title, we have Spider-Man Remastered using very high settings for both normal and ray tracing options. This time, since ray tracing is not as heavy as in the previous games, the RX 6800 actually handles its own pretty well, and although it still performs worse than the 3070 at native resolution, it doesn't perform much slower at 1080p with ray tracing enabled. At 1440p though we have an interesting surprise, with the RX 6800 actually surpassing the RTX 3070 native performance, and its ray tracing performance as well, being 8 average FPS faster and delivering 15 FPS more in the 1% lows. At 4K the RX 6800 maintains the lead over the RTX 3070 in terms of ray tracing results, with even the RX 6700 XT delivering the same 1% lows as the RTX 3070, which is once again a very nice surprise. And well, if you thought the benchmarking was over, this might actually be a pleasant surprise with two more games tested with upscalers in order to see how fast these GPUs can get. At 1440p the RX 6800 is 8 average FPS faster than the RTX 3070 when running native resolution, but when using FSR quality mode it gets 11 average FPS over it. It is also interesting to note that the RX 6700 XT can't reach the native RX 6800 results, not even when using FSR quality. But at 1440p ultra wide things change a bit, with the RX 6700 XT using FSR quality now matching the native RX 6800 results, with both AMD cards having the same 1% lows using FSR as the averages when running it natively. The last game is once again Spider-Man Remastered, now using FSR 2.1, DLSS and even XCSS from Intel. And the first thing that we can notice is that XCSS works much worse than FSR on AMD cards, but especially worse on the RTX 3070, where the XCSS set to quality actually delivered worse performance than native, which is insane. Bear in mind that the XCSS has an ultra quality mode, so unlike FSR and the LSS, we were not running the max quality settings here, otherwise it would be even worse. At 4K, somehow XCSS manages to look even worse once again. This might be due to having a higher render resolution than both FSR and the LSS, but since it looks equal or worse, I don't see the point of using it for any AMD or Nvidia GPUs, at least in this title. As for the RTX 3070, we can see once again how much faster it works with the LSS over FSR, but that's quite normal as AMD only optimizes FSR for their cards and it is up to Nvidia to optimize it for theirs, but since they have the LSS, well, 
that won't happen, I guess. Overall, interesting results. Let's move to the conclusion. Well, well, well. You actually saw the results in the benchmarks, you saw the results in terms of rasterization, so raw power performance, you saw the results in terms of ray tracing, and you saw the results in terms of the upscaling features like FSR and the NVIDIA DLSS, or even Intel's XCSS. Currently, in terms of prices, we, if we go to Newegg, for example, we can get the RX 6700 XT for around $350, the RTX 3070 for around 429 if refurbished and if you want a new one you can actually get one for around $500 and the same applies to the RX 6800 that can be bought for around $500. So if we're talking about buying a new GPU not refurbished, not used, we have the RTX 3070 and the RX 6800 on about the same value, the same price in terms of market American and even European market, okay? If you have uh, in some countries it may vary because it's how it works. But generally the RTX 3070 is priced around the same as the RX 6800 while the 6700 XT is usually priced around $150 less. So conclusion of the conclusion. If you really are one of those people that really love to enable ray tracing on every single game, even if it has to use the LSS or a lower resolution, the RTX 3070 is the way to go. If you're one of those people that actually want the maximum FPS they can get, and sometimes in lighter games they actually use ray tracing as well, then the 6800 is definitely the way, the way to go because lower power draw, decent ray tracing performance, not good but decent, at least in most games, um, even more with FSR, for example, and it costs the same as the 3070. If you want to go to the cheaper option, but still pretty, pretty decent for most players nowadays, like for 90% of players that play at 1080p and 1440p, the 6700 XT would be the way, and you can actually get it for $350. So it all depends to you on what you want, but overall, in terms of price performance, I would still pick the RX 6800. It's basically just because it is a really power efficient card that performs really well and at least decently well in terms of ray tracing, which for me is the way to go if it costs the same as the 3070. If you get a cheaper, way cheaper 3070, then that's the way to go. And well guys, that's all for today. Sorry for the long ass video. I uh, hope you really enjoyed the, um, the new kind of video, so the new benchmarks including uh, Ray Tracing and the LSS, XCSS and FSR. If you have any doubts, leave the comment in the comment section, leave the comments in the comment section. And also tell me, um, once again, if you actually enjoyed it, if you want me to change a bit the charts, what you liked more and what you liked less, because I really want to know. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.